Good day, good day viewers. Welcome to yet another edition of Dee's Take. Well, a lot has been happening in the Gambia, particularly in the Gambian social media space. But the most important and critical thing that Gambians have been talking about of late, <coughs> it's our power arrangements, our power situation, and I therefore want to talk about it, and I want to add my voice to it. But I'm going to focus on the politics and economics of power generation. See, Gambia has been having issues of power for over 35, 37 years. And the reason why we're still stuck where we are, it's more of a human problem than a technical problem or a financial problem. See, NOEC has issues, but the biggest issues confronting NAWIC is not the machines that should be generating power, but the human interference in the day-to-day -day running of this company. See, the politics of power is something that keeps people in the dark, in poverty, and out of reach for good economic development. Why? A stable electricity supply will put a lot of people out of business because they're in the business of making money in an erratic, unstable electric situation. And who are these people? These people are the movers and shakers and the players in the energy sector of this country. Basically, they control the politics of power. And the politics of power is really inflicting undue financial loss to the average Gambian, and it's also inflicting serious, serious losses to the businesses that operate in the Gambia by them having high tariffs that are not good for economic growth and prosperity. Now to the economics of power. See, if Gambia, is hap um, if Gambia happens to have good electric supply, a lot of things will change. Businesses will come to Gambia. Gambian businesses will be more efficient, and efficiency means better productivity. Better productivity means lower prices. Who is to gain when all this happens? The general public, the tax man. Who is to loss when Gambia becomes electric sufficient or electricity sufficient? Well, it's the cowboys in this business. Therefore, Gambia has found itself in a situation that's untenable and something needs to be done. We're all aware of the issues of Mr. John Jatta. We're all aware of the issues happening at NAWEC. And what's the way forward? First and foremost, we need to tackle NAWEC as a business. And all businesses need proper corporate structures. And highest on the corporate structure starts with the board. And that's where we measure good governance. We need to ask ourselves this question. Who are the people sitting at the board of NAWIC? And if we look at the people sitting on the board of NAWIC, some of them have a vested interest in the sector they're trying to sanitize. Some of them have a vested interest indirectly with the company that they're trying to represent NAWIC. You have subcontractors having a seat at the board of NAWIC. Do you think they will do anything that's detrimental to their business interests? No. You have a former MD CEO of NAWIC who is not part of the board but does business with NAWIC at a close proximity and that gives him an undue advantage relative to others by virtue of relationships established with the company and by virtue of prior knowledge established whilst working at NAWEC. Therefore, if this government really means well and wants to make sure we have a reliable power supply, we need to change the dynamics and it starts with the boardroom because the boardroom gives directions for management to follow. Classic example, the government of the Gambia, in collaboration with the World Bank, 
came out with a roadmap, the energy roadmap, that gives Gambia a medium to long-term view of what we need to do as it relates to our festering energy problems. Came out with a lot of solutions, some of them in terms of power generation, others in TND and O&M. Well, what has happened? They have deviated from that roadmap and a Turkish company has been brought in to provide temporal solution. But the word temporal can mean permanent. And the word temporal is relative depending on who is doing the interpretations. So, we need to be serious. I think the best way forward for NAWIC is for the government to look at the capital asset that NAWIC owns. And once we look at this capital asset, we will realize that most or a chunk of it has depleted to a residual value that is very insignificant because they've been in use since the late 70s. Go to power station, most of the machines there were brought in through a Danida loan slash grant and most of them are obsolete. So the cost of maintaining them doesn't make sense any longer. So what's the way forward once again? I think we need to understand the global dynamics of what power generation is. Yes, it's the responsibility of government to make sure that we have a power arrangement that is stable, reliable, and above all, affordable. Do we have that in Gambia today? The answer is no. Can we have that in the Gambia? The answer is yes. But before we have that, we need to understand that power has different components. It starts with generation distribution through transmission, billing, an O&M that's operational maintenance of the transmission. Therefore, if the government of the Gambia wants a quick fix to a festering problem, they will completely privatize the generation of power, meaning government and the public enterprise we call NAWIC will not worry any longer about generating Companies will be invited, they will bring their own generators, they will generate power, and NAWEC will buy it from their exit points, or take it rather from their exit points, put it on a transmission line. The national grid called the transmission and distribution will now be owned by NAWEC, and that will be the core business of NAWEC. So when NAWEC owns the transmission and distribution, all IPPs, these are the independent power producers, will generate power and NAWEC will put the power through their lines and NAWEC will make money through the throughput. Throughput is the power coming through these lines to the feeder lines and ultimately to the households and businesses in the Gambia. Therefore, for every one kilowatt of hour reaching my house, there's a fee that's owed to NAWEC by the generating company. Then the next thing, NAWEC will also have a spin-off that will be doing billing. So NAWEC will be billing on behalf of all the generating companies to the consumer. So basically the consumer market belongs to NAWEC, but NAWEC will be buying power from the generating companies. What will that do? It frees up NAWEC in terms of staff role, it frees up NAWEC and the government in terms of guarantees to buy fuel, spare parts and everything else. And that's what this country needs. Once we have such an arrangement, the Gambia will go ahead. Once we have such arrangements, the issues we are faced with today will be an issue or issues of the past. Is the government of the Gambia serious about resolving our um, electric issues? I doubt it. Why? Because the environment has been hijacked by business cronies who have a vested interest in this thing. But what the government fails to realize is that these business cronies, their interest is so insignificant relative to the interest of the overall economy and the greater good of Gambians. What have we inherited from the past? A crony arrangement that gave Gambians an inefficient pricing as it relates to power. 
Should we have inherited this post Yaya Jame? The answer is no. Should we have made a U-turn? The answer is yes. Hence the reason many Gambians have been calling for a transformative process as it relates not only to energy, but government's operational systems, procedures, and policies across the board. Nawek being one of those. Mr. President, with all due respect, the Gambia is poor today because of our bad energy solutions. The Gambia is poor today because of few people trying to milk the pockets of businesses and the average poor Gambian. How? Whatever is happening at the power generating site, there is a fat added to the tariff to make sure that some people have cheese. Oh no, this must stop and will come to a stop by hook or by crook. Because that's not what we bargained. December 1st, when we joined those lines at the hot sun, we voted for a change. And the change we all wanted and yearned for is a change to have a better day relative to the days of old. The days where Yaya Jame and his crony group milked us and milked us all the way to the cleaners. We will not have that. We are not going to tolerate that. And, that, and those practices will come to an end. The choice is yours, Mr. President. And I still hope you mean well. And I still hope you want what's best for the country. But wanting what's best for the country starts with killing crony capitalism. This going concern we call the Gambia belongs to everybody. And everyone has a vested interest in this going concern. Therefore, we will not allow few people to overrun us and really bring us down to our knees as it relates to the provision of something that is critical to our lives, livelihoods, and economy. We therefore hope that the first step towards sanitizing Nawek is to take care of the issues of the board. Nawek should have no person sitting at the board who has a vested interest in the sector. The people who should be taking care of the business of Nawek are in the business of in business with Nawek. You know what that means? The people who should be looking at the best interest of Nawek have a business interest directly with Nawek. Therefore, it's a conflict of interest and a moral faux pas for them to take care of Nawek. Well, if they don't know it, let's tell them. Because today, if they were appointed at the board of Nawek, they should have been the first to say, I have a vested interest with Nawek. Therefore, it's a conflict of interest for me to sit at the board. But like the Wallops will say, We will not tolerate that, Mr. President. And we want transparency. We want better governance in terms of our corporate structures. And you know what? We deserve better. We have suffered enough to allow a new group of cronies to make a living out of our livelihoods. This is not acceptable. The politics of power should cease and desist. The economics of power needs to be revisited for the interest of the greater good. We cannot talk about industrialization if we have tariffs that are overly exorbitant. We cannot talk about a better tourism sector if the sector is overcharged by NAWIC. Let's be serious about developing this country. And if we have sons and daughters who think that Gambia is a personal cover for them to just come and milk, we tell them enough is enough. On that note, I wanted to put this video out. And after a while, I'll bring an interview of Mr. John Jatta. John Jatta is a well-meaning Gambian 
who saw the wrongs in this sector and is yearning for guidance. He is yearning for self-corrective measures by the proxies we have voted in office to do what's right to the Gambian concern, to the Gambian lot, to all of us. So, Mr. President, you are the one who should deliver us because on that hot sun of December 1st, we made a pledge to cut the umbilical cord of tyranny and the business as usual, to bring you into office hoping you can lead the charge to transform this country we all love. That transformation is yet to take foot. That transformation is not taken seriously. And people still believe Gambia is this cow that they need to milk. It's not going to happen. And we don't want a confrontation with the proxies we have bestowed power on. To whom much is given, much is expected, Mr. President. The people of the Gambia has given you a lot. And I do hope you appreciate the efforts we have done in giving you. But yes, we are still the boss of the politicians. We are still the masters of our political destiny. And we will take issues in our own hands and do corrective measures to make sure that no one, nobody takes us for a ride. We have been taken for a ride too long. We are sick and tired of being sick and tired of being prostituted and abused by our political class. Gambia deserves better. Gambians want better. And Gambians will get better by hook or by crook. The politics of our power generating sector will be brought to an end. Whether people like it or not, we will name and shame the people who want to bring Gambians to their knees and bleed our pockets. We will punish politicians who want to be strength bed fellows with the people who want to milk this country. On that note, you either do right or you go down. And I do hope the people we have voted in office don't want to go down. Therefore, do right to country, do right to Gambians, so that we will be proud to call the lot we call our political class our leaders. Gambia is not a political experiment. We are not looking for people to come and do trial and errors. Gambia is not a casino where people gamble on our future. Gambians are tired. Gambians are battered. Gambians are yearning for help. And that help must come from the political leaders we've entrusted with power. Enough of the crony capitalism. Enough of taking Gambians for fools. And you know what? The talk shop is closed. The action shop is open. Show us how you're going to take us to prosperity. Show us the road to redemption. Show us the road to development. Not the road to scheme us, fleece us, and take the best out of the little we got left. So long, Gambia, and watch out for John Jatta's tape. Thanks a lot. <laughs>